Hello everybody, this is Hammer Striker here. I've got a couple of guns that are designed for concealed carry. I've got the Springfield Armory Hellcat Pro and I've got the CZ75 Compact. Both of these are 9mm. Please don't forget to check out our website. Go to our affiliates page. You'll find discount codes for things like Mantis Axe and Core Belts. Link to that cool little bore light that we use for lighting up the barrels. Use those links. It will often save you money never will cost you any additional money and helps the channel. And please consider supporting the channel on Utreon where we can do some videos that we can no longer do on YouTube. So this comparison isn't going to be about which one of these is better. They're obviously different. One's a metal gun, one's a polymer gun. One's going to be heavy because it's metal. The CZ75 weighs 32.8 ounces and the Hellcat Pro over there weighs 21 ounces. So that's not what this is about. It's more about there's a lot of people that just are not enthralled with the polymer guns for carry and they really like metal guns. They like 1911s, they like things like that. But in 1911, for carry, you, especially if you get a smaller one, you take a serious hit in capacity. So what this is gonna be more about is for those that like to carry metal guns or polymer guns, depending on which one you, you're looking at here, the options are very similar. So the CZ75 holds 15 rounds in its flush magazine, gives you a full three finger grip, has a nice beaver tail to prevent hammer bite. Uh, it does have a skeletonized hammer and it has a metal trigger. So I'm gonna put this down for a second and go over here to the Hellcat Pro, which is also similar in that it has a 15 round magazine. It also has a, an available factory 17 round magazine that integrates with the grip and gives you a continuous grip. So it just integrates smoothly and well, doesn't leave any places for pinching or anything else. So the, the Hellcat Pro's capacity is expandable. The CZ75, you could expand the capacity by using the full-size CZ magazines, but they're just going to hang down. They're, they'll they'll kind of hang down like that. There'll be no sleeve that I'm aware of for them or no grip integration. Good news is, whichever one you're doing, it's kind of going to not matter. They're three-finger grip guns as as is. So you're less likely on a gun this size to be pushing on the mag and causing malfunctions. So capacity is similar between the two of them. Footprint is similar. From a length perspective, the Hellcat is definitely shorter. If I go beaver tail, beaver tail to beaver tail and get them lined up properly, you can see that the Hellcat, it's 6.6 .6 inches long as opposed to 7.24 inches long. So 0.6 and change inches difference in length from front to back. Now, when you go to height, to be fair, I'm gonna to have to put them up on something because the Hellcat does have a, an optic on it and that would kind of skew things. But if I hold it up right now, you'll see the Hellcat is just a bit shorter, 4.8 inches versus 5.03 for the CZ. So when you look at the overall footprint, you know, the, the box it takes up, they're similar. Now, when you get to width, there's a difference. The Hellcat is quite a thin gun. It's coming in right at one inches thick. And the CZ, you can see, is kind of a plump little thing. It's 1.38 inches. It's not really huge, but it is noticeably thicker. And you can see the contour of the grips and everything adds thickness to it. Whereas the Hellcat's pretty straight, flat along the sides. Trying to hide it, the Hellcat's going to have the advantage. Thin, flat, and limited contours makes it really easy to hide the gun. You're going to have a little more fun hiding the CZ. And of course, I did mention the weight. The weight's going to make a difference. But to those that like metal guns, the weight is not a negative, it's a positive. In fact, CZ, when they describe this gun, they brag about only losing two point something ounces when they go down to compact, as opposed to most guns, they'll say, you know, they'll be proud of the fact they got rid of weight. CZ, they said, pretty much saying that we're able to make a smaller gun and not lose too much weight. So those that like the metal guns, like the weight, like the feel, like the recoil management, the recoil on the CZ is virtually non-existent. The Hellcat has very nice, very controllable recoil, but it's more noticeable. The gun is much lighter, so there's less of the gun absorbing that recoil impulse than being transferred to your hand. With the CZ, more of the gun is picking up the recoil impulse. Now, the CZ is kind of old school. When we look at the Hellcat and guns like it, they're kind of the new generation. So the Hellcat has optics ready on it. It has front and rear serrations on it. It has very nice factory sights with a night sight with a ring on it to make it easy to see during the day or at night. And the rear sight's just a U. And of course you have the optics mount. CZ sights aren't quite as impressive. They're kind of small dots. 
they look like they glow. They're that photoluminescent paint. So if they've been exposed to light, they'll glow for a period of time and then it'll eventually fade. Not really a true replacement for night sights, but they do, at least during the day at a range, they're easier to see because they do glow and they kind of stand out. So that's really what that photoluminescent will get you. On both the guns, the sights are replaceable. So, and there's cl plenty of sights out there for both the Hellcat and the CZ. So if you don't like the sights, there's different, you know, easy to swap out. So let's talk about the triggers for a second, because that's going to be one of the differences that you might notice. So the Hellcat is your classic striker gun. It has the inertial toggle, has the internal drop safety piston. There is no thumb safety. A little bit of take up. Nice, short, crisp, clean break. Nice reset. It's not an ultra short reset, but it is a nice reset. And I'm right on the wall. And again, that light, crisp break. So the Hellcat has quite a nice trigger, but notice it didn't cycle because I don't have a round in it, so the trigger is back. Like most of the Striker guns these days, it has to cycle for the trigger to become operational again. It's effectively single action from a trigger perspective. When you move to the CZ, it mimics a 1911 in a lot of respects, except for the fact that it's double action. So I can just keep pulling the trigger as many times as I want to. It will pull the hammer back and fire the gun. And the double action pull on this is relatively light and very smooth. Now if I have the hammer back, whether I thumbed it back or it was cycled, you'll notice of course the, the take up is, is lessened because the trigger is pulled back along with the hammer. And a very light 1911-ish short crisp break. Oops, I left the magazine in it, so of course that'll make that a little bit of a clumsy setup there. That was the reset, a very short reset. It bounced a little bit off of the reset, so there was a hair of take up. I'm going to do that again, this time without the mag in it. And again, a nice, short, crisp break. There's the reset. And again, it does bounce off the reset, so that's just the way it's working. A little bit of take up to get back on the wall, and then a nice, crisp break. So this has more of that DSA, DASA feel that people that are liking 1911s do like. To the point that this gun, this is a safety, and notice I can't operate the safety because the hammer's down. It does have a quarter cock position. If you pull the hammer back a little bit, now it's in quarter cock and it's blocked from even touching the firing pin. It also has an internal drop safety. So these are designed to be drop safe, but still can't operate the safety because the safety only operates when it's in the fully cocked position, cocked and locked, like a 1911. Safety operates very smoothly when the hammer is cocked like it's supposed to be. Easy to thumb on, easy to thumb off, and nice serration so that I don't slip off it, but it's not biting into my finger. And if I try to operate the trigger with the safety on, the trigger is dead, the hammer is blocked, and even if the hammer did fall, it would hit that quarter cock stop, and then if it got past that, it's going to hit the internal drop safety piston. So these are designed to be drop safe. There is not an ambi safety on this. Now some of the CZ-75s, which this is basically a, CZ, a small CZ-75, have a decocker option. I'm not aware of that for this one, and this is not the Omega trigger, so it's not as easy as just you know sw swapping things around. The other difference between these, this doesn't have a Picatinny rail, and of course most of the modern striker guns are coming with rails these days. Now let's talk about the price. This is a metal gun, the CZ-75 is a metal gun. Immediately, okay, you're looking at $1,000. Not true. The MSRP on these is actually the same. They're both I have an MSRP of 649. So you can go with either the metal gun that you might like if you're a person that likes metal guns, likes 1911s, but doesn't want just six rounds. If you like polymer guns, then the Hellcat is, is a very, very good choice compared to some of their others that are out there. So coming back around towards wrapping up, as I mentioned earlier in the video, neither one of these is better than the other. They're different types of design to serve different types of people with different desires. If you're a stri if, if you really like the polymer guns, you want the smaller, lighter footprint, I, I would choose the Hellcat. I carry various different polymer guns because I like them because they're light and they're easy to conceal. Now, when you look at this, people that really like the 1911 but hate the capacity, like metal guns, aren't so worried about the the weight of it and 
want to be able to have you know the thumb safety the DASA action uh, there is a decocker option available on this too so you can either have it with a safety or a decocker the decocker version can easily safely be carried hammer down the CZ comes into play because you're with this gun you're not locked out of comfortable concealed carry with decent capacity and you're not paying premium prices typically the metal guns they're expensive this one really isn't so both of these prove to be reliable. Both of these serve the purpose that they're designed to serve quite well. And both of them are viable options depending on what you want. Beyond that, if you like our videos, please give us a thumbs up, share, subscribe, click that bell to be notified if you do. Check us out on Facebook, Instagram, Player, Rumble. We're pretty much everywhere. And thank you. enough.